Hey guys, Paul from JCR Chassis Works here. Uh, this is a 67 McAmos fiberglass bodied Chevy 2 that we built. Uh, struts, four length, big tire, carbon interior, chrome package, uh, the whole nine yards. Uh, very, very nice build. Uh, we did for a customer who has now changed his mind about the, uh, about the whole thing. Uh, he initially was going to do some 632 racing. He had a dry sump, Shafroff 632, uh, nitrous combination, uh, some top sportsman stuff and whatnot. And uh, like I said, now he has uh, changed his mind about that whole thing. Uh, the motor and transmission are sold. It is just the body um, and the chassis here and everything detailed in this video. Um, I'll try to cover as much as I can to where if you were interested in buying it, um, you should have seen and heard enough and everything that there is to know to where you can uh, just uh, pay for the car, car and uh, send somebody after it. Um, it's a brand new car, no used stuff on it, no junk, um, you know, all, all nice stuff. This guy didn't, uh, didn't take the cheap way out on anything. Um, the parts in this would take around 40 or so, 40, 45,000 to replace. Uh, that was pre-COVID prices. Um, and then somewhere in the 80, five, maybe 85,000 in, uh, in labor. Uh, the car is for sale for 85,000. And as they say, it's, uh, it's for sale, not on sale. Um, although I think you're saved 50 grand or something, um, buying this car as is, and you wouldn't have to wait a year or so to get it built. Uh, like I said, it is a custom build. It isn't just some one-off, one, you know, cookie cutter car. Tons of custom, neat one-off trick stuff we did on it, uh, which, you know, that stuff takes time and costs money. Uh, if you're looking for some cookie cutter car, just to throw your drivetrain in and go beat on, uh, this probably isn't it. You can pick those cars up cheap. Um, but if you look for a brand new car that's uh, really never been sat in, not, not all beat up, chips and scratches and crazy stuff going on, um, that's in a perfect place to finish uh, with whatever paint or wrap you might want to do or engine combination, um, man, this is it. A, uh, if I had more time to campaign something like this, I'd be all over it myself. Uh, it's an absolute steal on an absolutely gorgeous car. Um, as you see it, with no motor, no transmission, no drive shaft, um, the third member is in it. Uh, this car weighs less than 1,200 pounds the way you see it. This uh, 25.1 car, I may have already said carbon interior and chrome package, uh, which I will detail all that stuff later in the car. It does have a three inch ride height in the front, uh, around two inches on the sides. The rocker panels are fabricated. So the car, you know, sits more level with the ground. Uh, for that big tire without putting humps up in the quarter panels or something. Um, the chassis is powder coated. It's probably the nicest, smoothest, cleanest powder coat job I've ever seen. Uh, absolutely beautiful. The carbon interior. Uh, it's a shame the video and pictures don't do this thing justice. It's absolutely gorgeous. The powder coat, 
the shop that did that for us, done multiple things for us, that shop, downsized and just kind of went into a, a small deal where they don't do anything this big anymore, which is a shame because they sure did do a nice job when you paid for it, as, as with anything. But uh, man, like I said, it is nice. Um, they put some kind of primer under it so it doesn't uh, have issues later down the road where it really, uh, it's really durable. Um, one thing with the powder coat that they use also is anytime we've had to go back in it, it really cleans up nice where it, where it comes off. It's not all gummy and nasty and hard to weld through and hard to fix stuff if you decide to add something to it later. Um, like I said, those guys really did a nice job on things. Um, but uh, I will go around and detail the things about the car. Um, and hopefully I catch everything of importance and things of interest. There's a build thread album on the JCR Chassis Works Facebook page with tons of, of pictures and it shows a lot of the neat trick stuff that we did. Um, so anyway, this is the car. Um, lots of info to come. Um, if you have any questions, contact us. And I will probably leave the video up so people can see, see the car in the future. Um, so check the title of the video and see if it has been sold or if it's still available. Uh, so I'm just saying just because the video is up describing it doesn't mean it's still for sale. Um, you can see right there in that door, there's some little white marks down by the bottom. In the middle, those are just some little scuff marks from when we received the body from McAmis, I think the doors had rubbed up against the crating or something, put some scratches in it, scuff marks. Um, that's not cracks or beat up or anything. The body doesn't have cracks and stuff in it. Um, I mean, like I said, hey, this is a really nice car. Uh, look for the, uh, through the rest of the info, watch that video, take a few minutes and watch it. Uh, and don't be, don't be messaging and calling with info that's already in this video. Um, the video is probably going to be 15 minutes or something. Um, you know, like I said, when you get done watching that video, you should pretty much know everything about the car that you need to know. Uh, once again, there's, it's nothing hidden, no, no goofy stuff. Car was not thrown together to sell, you know, stupid stuff that crooked people do. Um, this is put together the way we would if we were going to, uh, you know, deliver it to the owner. Um, or anybody else for that matter. Uh, of course, the chassis setup has to be done, front alignment, you know, stuff like that. You need to go over and check every nut and bolt, um, you know, stuff like that. Uh, you know, that, that, that would be, uh, you know, the, the end owner's responsibility to, uh, to make sure that when they go down the track that they're safe with all, like I said, with the hardware and stuff. And the chassis setup needs to be done once the final combination is done and the weight is in it and stuff. Uh, the back of that car will go down level or nearly level. Uh, right now, there's there's no uh, there's no weight in the car with the uh, you know the motor and transmission's not in it, so it does sit a little higher in the back. Um, but it's low. When you walk up to it. She is she is low. Uh, And on the back of the car, we have a McAmis wing. It has the billet aluminum strut mounts. Chromoly wheelie bars, all powder coated, heavy duty rod ends. quick pins for the adjustment when you're when you're loading the car you pull the pin lift the bar up and then put the put the rod end in here I'm sure most of you know that uh, it's got the upgraded 
billet aluminum wheelie bar wheels. On the parachute mount, it is set up for the air launch shroud. As you can see, it is a single, but we have built the mount to be either a single or a double chute. There's another one of these spacers that would go here and go here if you were going to run the two chutes. Of course, you'll have to build a, a double pack mount for it. Uh, this one is removable. It has, it slips inside this piece of tubing and then there's a pull pin on the inside so you can get this off. Uh, so you would, if you're running a single, it, it goes like this. If you were gonna run a double, there's again, another one of these bushings. There's actually two more. There's another bushing that would go here and one would go here. Uh, and then you would put the bolt through it and then your tethers would be here and here, uh, whereas the single, the tether is in the middle. Uh, the gentleman that we built the car for wasn't sure exactly what he was going to do with it. And we initially built it for one with the option to put the double on it at a later date. As you can see, the, the tabs come through the rear body panel, nice and clean. Doesn't have a big mount sticking out through the rear bumper or rear body panel. We have the battery cut off. It is chrome plated also. The wing is adjustable for the wicker bill height. It does look like you could put factory tail lights in this if you wanted to, which we had entertained possibly doing. It does have champion wheel double bead locks. They are 15 by 15. The tire is a 3316. Uh, Champion did uh, have a death in the family and they did go out of business. So they are not making that wheel. Those Champion does not make wheels anymore. Um, it is a fabricated nine inch housing. Um, actually will accept nine and a half inch ring gear. Uh, it has a strange ultra case in it with a 410 gear. It's got the ring for the magnetic pickup. Those are JRI, double adjustable, top sportsman shocks for it. Uh, the springs that are on it are a typical spring. Uh, you may you may need to change them depending on the combination and what what you uh, end up doing with it, the chassis setup and whatnot. You can see the brake lines and the fire system lines up there. The one with the T in it is the fire system. It goes forward. It does have strange 40 spine gun drilled and lightened axles. It's got the strange two piece rotor. Uh, the wishbone has heavy-duty rod ends, hardware, uh, so do the four-link bars. All of the suspension is mounted with NAS or AN hardware. It's got the billet, bickle, style wishbone mounts which are real nice project mounts 
which we do have the projects for it. Weight bar tabs. There's a drive shaft enclosure, which is removable. The transmission mount is the slide style. Where you can slide the transmission back to help in the removal or pulling the converter out. It is set up for a power glide. Seat belt mount right here. You can see the anti roll bar up there. See the pictures that go with the build thread for a lot of uh, a lot of this stuff. Uh, the stuff. The housing brackets are the Rick Jones ProMod brackets. They're the, the long style down here. All of those, after they were welded, those holes are reamed to size. Same thing on the chassis brackets. Look up there with the red wires hanging. That is LED lights that light up the back here. If you need to do a shock adjustment or something going on uh, at night, those are super bright. There's several more around the car too, which I will show you. The rear end housing has a couple quarts of Lucas gear oil in it. Um, I didn't top it off or check the level of it. Um, it I'm sure it doesn't have enough. Um, I put a little bit in it so it would uh, not be running dry while it was being moved and and different things because uh, yeah, that, that's not good for the bearings and things. So we did put a little in it. So make sure if you're the buyer that you, you do check that. You can see the floor in it for the trunk floor. Here's the top surface of the back of the car. Again, the McAmos wing. It does have the McAmos fiberglass body, just as it came from him. See all the, all the Seuss fasteners are put in with the smash rivets. They can be removed and uh, Redone when you paint it or wrap it. The gentleman we built the car for was going to wrap it, but he was also going to run it for a while as is and then, then do the wrap later when he decided exactly what he was gonna do. Uh, so we did finish up the hardware on it. Um, but again, I, I would be taking that apart if you were going to uh, go ahead and paint it and, and wrap it. Um, you'll notice the factory seams from McCamus here. Uh, they just got to be sanded down whenever you do, again, the paintwork or, or wrapping. Uh, there are the holes where it was clecoed in place. Uh, there's several spots around the car for those. Um, I, I've heard it said that they always show up and come back. Uh, that's not necessarily true. It depends on how they're done. Uh, definitely, you do them wrong, they'll come back. Um, but there is a way to do it where... Uh, where that doesn't show and that this is typical anyway uh, the rear tubs see it's a got the cut in it here and it's angled because the tub does stick stick up in the window um, the tire doesn't go that high uh, it does come up some it's it's got clearance here at the side the tire is probably in in here 
at ride height, but it, again, it is down. And then as the tire grows, it does, you know, it will come up in the sail panel a little. Uh, the tubs are up pretty high because it does, the distance from the four link cross member to the center of the, the rear end housing or the wheel well um, kind of dictates what size tubs are in it. Uh, that way the tub goes all the way to the four link cross member. Um, so that, again, that's, that's why they're high. Uh, that's got nothing to do with the, with the tire or whatever so much as obviously you gotta have adequate room, but the, the distance on that four link cross member set, what size tub it, it has. Uh, the windows are all put in with black stainless screws. If you see around the edge, the black, the borders are not painted on it. That is black tape that we put around the, the ledge, uh, the body, which after you paint the borders on it, you will want to put that tape back on it so it doesn't wear or chip on the, so the body doesn't wear onto the window. Uh, we didn't paint the borders on the windows because again, you're, when you take this car apart to paint it or wrap it or whatever you do, you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna pull them windows out. And quite often I've seen when we pull windows out that that paint will stick to the body, end up chipping that border. Uh, so there's just no need to do that before it's painted or wrapped. But it does look good uh, walking up on it, it. It looks real good. If you study it, you can obviously see that it's not painted on there. Inside the trunk. A five pound Safecraft fire system that is all plumbed in. There is a nozzle in the passenger compartment and then nozzles up in front of the engine. This has the fire system activated battery cutoff solenoid. So when you activate the fire system, it will shut the power off. Has a little support on it with a clamp. Or a tire shake or something doesn't doesn't bust that off, cause any damage. Uh, the chassis is all powder coated. This is the only aluminum in the car. Is these two little triangle pieces on each side? Actually, there's a the little the little filler here on the wheelie bar tunnel. Um, we didn't do that out of carbon. Uh, one, because this black really does a lot of contrast. It really does look good in there. Uh, and then to do it out of carbon, these edges of this, you would have had to make the, all the adapters to put that in and all the extra screws and all the work that it takes uh, really didn't feel like it was worth it. Uh, it, it just looks, looks fantastic the way it is. It's hard to see it in this video. Um, Stainless bolt welded to the frame rail for the battery ground it's battery tray. There's a chrome tube style hold down that goes for the battery. Jazz fuel cell, brand new Magna fuel pump it is the 500 supports here for the trunk lid. So the air coming off the back window doesn't push the trunk lid down and ruin aerodynamics and the function of the wing. Uh, and ultimately the downforce and the, the chute deployment. There's tons of little tricks and neat stuff done on this car. And I hope that I'm showing you at least some of it. There's so much stuff done that it's hard to hard to get it all or remember everything that we've done. It also has the push bar system on the parachute mount back there. I see that. There's another stainless bolt that's TIG welded here for battery grounds. See the cables coming down for the parachute. They're the lightweight cables and then the battery cut off, I'm sorry, the fire system release cable comes down. Yeah, 
This is the passenger side, obviously. Um, it was certified back when uh, we were finishing up the car, or finishing up the chassis on it, the chassis got certified, which it has now expired uh, by a couple months, I believe. It actually may still have some left on it. Get to thinking about it, it probably hasn't been that long. Uh, but either way, um, it, it has been certified. It is a 25-1 car, uh, which is uh, 2,800 pounds and less. And uh, whatever ET you want to go. Uh, got the latches for the windows. Uh, the doors have the tape on them, like I explained on the back window. So does the quarter glass. Same way. Same reason. Windshield, same way. nitrous bottle mount is removable is the valves I've got a little halogen LED or something light in my hand is why you see funny reflections coming and going uh, a Camus carbon tunnel um, pretty much everything on the interior carbon wise is McAmis. Uh carbon sheet to use for the uh, for the door panels and such, and the back closeout panels, uh, that panel between the tubs is removable. You need to reach in there and uh, make an adjustment or getting some of the bolts out for some some maintenance. Um, there's a, a bolt welded, stainless bolt welded to that tube right there for ground wires for uh, electronics. It's a race pack mount if you so desire. Uh, The fire system release is set up for two fire bottles. If you decide to do that, uh, you can add another one to it. Uh, the parachute release uh, is already set up for the two. Uh, it's a K&R delay box, the B&M shifter, we also have all the, the rest of the uh, stuff that goes with that shifter. Also, the, uh, the brackets and cables and stuff. Uh, there's a box of miscellaneous stuff that goes with the car. Um, I'll, I'll get that stuff and show you. It's the throttle pedal with a the pullback. There's a switch on the pedal down there for the nitrous activation. And I will go around to the other side of the car, do that. There's a lip here for the uh, Lexan window to shut on so it isn't just hanging out there in the air. It's all fabricated. You see the door shuts real nice. Got a new window net in it. That window net's only, at this point, a week or so old. There's a pad for the headrest for your helmet to go against right there. It's got the McAmis carbon seat with the reinforcements around the uh, Zeus fasteners, the door strikers, chrome plated as well. The car does have the chrome package, tons of chrome on it. I'm sure you see that stuff going by in the picture. Uh, carbon tube protectors. Uh, strap right there is for the for the doors, so the doors can't open too far and come off. The hinges have a tab on them, so if the, if the doors aren't open pretty much all the way, the doors will not come off. Uh, and that strap kind of keeps things limited so the door doesn't open too far, open up against the body. The can see the um, rod right here for the window adjustment. Uh, it's got a rod end on it. 
I'm sorry, a little stainless clevis to adjust some tension on the windows to make them fit nice, makes the door shut good. Uh, the pedals are chromed. It does have the speed wire panel with the custom bracket made for it. Uh, you can see with the wires hanging more LED lights up here. There is a tube right there. Um, if you need to put your hand up there and kind of give yourself a little boost as you're getting up, the gentleman we built it for had some uh, some leg issues and he kind of wanted a, a little helping hand if he needed it, so we built that there for him. Like I said, tons of stuff all over the car. Um, panel over there on the door bars for your electronics. There's also a ground. Uh, down around the corner, another stainless bolt welded to the chassis. On the steering column, there's a stainless bolt welded there. Uh, there's one over here too, you can see sticking out. A lot of grounds on there just, just to facilitate the building of the car. And all the wiring and plumbing that might have to be done. Billet steering wheel extension, uh, I believe that is a three inch three or four. I think we have a six inch, one of them also for it. Uh, obviously the transmission tunnel is removable. So is the floor on the passenger side. The front wheels are champion also. It does have to build it aluminum, 12 point lug nuts for them. It's a great looking wheel. Uh, one thing to note is when we got the body from McAmis, he gave us the, the critical dimensions for the build, uh, being the ride height, the rear end width, and miscellaneous things, and the, uh, the distance between the struts and the width of the uh, front suspension, the track width and things. And um, with bolt-on wheels like these, as opposed to spindle mounts, these bolt-on wheels are maybe a half inch or so offset out, uh, whereas the spindle mounts are, the track width is a little narrower. And one thing about that is if you cut the wheel all the way, the last just little smidge of that, that wheel will rub that fender. I almost think it was just on this side because it does have staggered wheelbase. Um, I think um, I think it was this side that was that rubbed a little bit. Um, and again, it's just that last little bit really isn't an issue unless you had the wheel cut all the way. Uh, and if you you know if you back the wheel off just a little bit, the steering wheel, it doesn't do that. Um, but spindle mount wheels don't do that. Uh, he neglected to tell us if we were doing bolt-on that that was um, that they had to be a little narrower. Um, me personally, if I was doing this, I would put the the V series welds on it. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan of those, um, and then that would that would cure that. Um, but that's up to you guys. I, again, it's not really that big of a deal about it rubbing. Only if you have the wheel cut all the way does it do that. Again, if you if you're just a smidge away from all the way, no problem at all. And the spindle mounts, when they're on there, you can get your hand up between the wheel and the fender with it cut all the way. Uh, the, it is set up for a big block, Chevrolet and a Glide. Um, it's got the Bickle adjustable strut mounts. Um, as with some of this other stuff, I didn't put the, the caps on all the way. They're up just a smidge. Uh, they're kind of tough to get off. I uh, don't want to scab them up, prying them loose. So at the end, wherever the chassis setup ends up, um, then that would be the time to put them in. We also, uh, I put these spacers on the strut shaft for the ride height. Uh, obviously with, um, with no engine in it, it sits up real high and looks goofy. So um, we have the springs for it for the big block, um, which obviously go with it. Um, 
So that's why those spacers are there. Um, chrome package uh, that we do also includes the steering, shaft, tie rods, control arms, the four link anti roll, I mean, all that stuff. There's tons of stuff all over the car that's chromed. Uh, radiator mounts. Uh, this here radiator uh, has the integral water pump over there where you see the green tape. Uh, the water pump does not go with the car. Um, the line lock, which is new. The brake lines and fire system, all that stuff's run inside of the frame rails all the way to the back of the car. I don't know if I showed you that when we were talking about the back or not. Um, transmission cooler over there. There's a fan that goes with it. That's the Bickle setup. Um, the fan that goes with it is in a box over there, depending on whether you put it on the inside or outside of that, or you decide to move it, whatever. Um, but we do have that. More weight, weight bar mounts, strange struts, strange brakes, of course. Removable radiator. And that may be it for the front. There is the fender mount, the lower fender mounts. Here is the car up on the Projax. They are the Bickle Jacks. Uh, the customer did not want them chromed. He was going to get them powder coated. So they do have a little bit of uh, his surface rust on them from sitting around. It's not bad. Just some discoloration. Uh, the air over hydraulic pump. It's the inner pack pump. It's not some cheap junk. Uh, if you notice, there's a piece of tape that says wheelie bars. And with any of these cars, you put them up on the jacks. You want to put the bars in the up position, for the transport position. Uh, that way, when you uh, raise the car or lower it, that the wheelie bars don't hit and uh, support the weight of the car and end up uh, messing stuff up. So I always put that tape on it to remind us to do that. Here are some parts that go with the car. Uh, here is the fan for the uh, transmission cooler that I spoke of. Here is the battery hold down that I spoke of. Front springs. Here is the longer steering wheel extension. Uh, so finish caps that go on the uh, parachute cables after you've cut them to length, depending on, again, what chute and how you set that up. Uh, the shims and uh, things that go for the struts. Uh, there's some torrenting bearings for the springs here. Those would be for the front springs. Uh, the back doesn't need them because there's, there's really no pressure on those. Uh, they turn real easy with them front ones. They're kind of a they can be a bear to turn if there's a, if those bearings aren't in there. This is a little mount for a fan. Uh, there's a little fan mount, a little boss welded to the dash bar uh, to put a fan in there if you want to. The fan is below down here. I'm going to show you that. Here's the spacers I mentioned for the uh, parachute tethers. This is the throttle linkage. Uh, it's got that. T on it, that part goes to the pedal itself, and that T part, um, the cross bolt, keeps it from turning, getting out of alignment, just keeps it straight up and looking good. Um, it is adjustable for length, depending on where you want the gas pedal set at. There's a stop and things for the gas pedal also. Uh, the nitrous activation switch 
that's on the gas pedal. It's adjustable too for forward and back. Uh, there's that little fan I mentioned. Uh, the shifter stuff. Um, there's some uh, Lucas gear oil in there. Uh, miscellaneous crap out of the master cylinder you don't need. Um, and then the speed wire channel cable distribution block the relay board and fuse panel uh, if you haven't used the speed wire stuff it's really nice really simple at that point mount that board uh, the switch panel is in the car already on a nice custom mount that we built for it um, at this point you mount that board and just run wire to your, uh, your water pump, to the fuel pump, uh, you know, a couple of miscellaneous things like that. And man, your, your, your wiring is done. Uh, like I said, it's, it's uh, super nice.